Hello and welcome to another episode of Dyer Times. I'm your host David Dyer and today we're going to take a look at the Tactical Innovations TAC-65 sound suppressor for pretty much any 22 platform you want to put it on barring you have the right threaded adapter. Now this system is, it's been out a long time uh, and I really wanted to take a look at it and show it to you all today because it is one of the most affordable sound suppressors that you know we can really get into as far as the class 3 weapons go. So we're going to go take a look at that over at the table and talk about some of the specs and then get to shoot. All right, so meet the TAC-65 sound suppressor. It is just a tiny little suppressor weighing in at only about four ounces, um, just under six inches long with about an inch in diameter. Uh, it's really not bad once you mount it to the end of a firearm, even a pistol. Uh, what's nice is uh, generally people mount these on a Walther uh, P22. Uh, most of the P22s actually come with the adapter. Uh, some of them don't, it's really not all that expensive. Uh, with it on the end of the firearm, it is not that unhandy, and you can still use your sights, which is really nice. So there's not a whole lot of tolerance looking over, but you can still see it and uh, get a good a target picture, as well as you don't really notice it too much on the end of the firearm. Now, the way a suppressor actually works is you'll notice you've, you've got the threads, of course, where the uh, it actually screws in the adapter, but these outside holes are meant for a a wrench that will actually spin this end cap off and inside they actually have what they call K-baffles. Now it's more or less imagine a washer and a spacer. In this case it's kind of washer a cone and then another washer. So what that allows is when the bullet, before the bullet as it comes through it's pushing all that air and that hot air is expanding out of the barrel into here. When that happens it captures it and kind of dissipates it before it actually reaches the end of the muzzle and it suppresses the sound by doing that. Now of course if you have a supersonic round you're still going to hear the report. One of the things about the TAC-65 that I really like I mentioned earlier is it is one of the most affordable sound suppressors that you can get into. Uh, right now they're actually on sale for about $234 but they usually are around $250. Now of course then you've got to get the $200 tax stamp and get it transferred to you. Um, but that really is one of the most affordable options you have. So without further ado, let's get it over the range and see what it sounds like. All right, so we have two Walther P22 pistols. We have the TAC-65 installed on one and one we do not. I'm gonna get up and show you, or more or less let you kind of hear the difference between suppressed and unsuppressed. All right. Walther P22 unsuppressed. All right, and this is Erica, and she's gonna be showing you the suppressed version. Don't really need these. All right, now we have HD audio rolling, so you can really hear that there is a significant difference between the unsuppressed and the suppressed version. So generally, just to give you an idea, suppressors are usually in the range of 130 to 145 decibels, with some of the quietest ones being at like 118, and I think the quietest on record was like 111. So somewhere in there. Now this one is very quiet, and it's so quiet that you really don't need hearing protection to shoot it. Uh, in fact, people just over there probably don't even know we're up here shooting, which is really cool. So you mentioned earlier that we could use the suppressor on a rifle also. Absolutely. Now, uh, a lot of the 1022 barrels you can get with the thread already on the end, but if you don't have one and you don't have the money or the ability to find a machinist that will put one on it for you, and there's some laws governing, governing whether they can put a, a suppressor on if they know that that's what you're going to be doing with it. But the barrels are typically $100 to $130, or you can invest in an adapter just like this one that will fit very conveniently on the end of a 1022 with the sight already on. You can put it on just like this and it will add threads to the end of your barrel. Uh, now you gotta be careful on some of these if they're not high quality or not well made. You could you know, kind of get it on there at a different angle or even if you drop it, there could be damage uh, to the barrel or the suppressor. And the big thing you have to worry about too is what they call baffle strikes. So if this is not lined up quite properly with the 
barrel, you could actually get a, a round hit the side of the suppressor and do damage to it. Now that's a little less likely with the 22. There's some decent tolerances built in there, but ideally, you know, you want to take every precaution necessary. Otherwise, you've got to send it back to the company to get it repaired. So let's screw this on there, get the 22s out, and just have some fun. We've had a great time out here shooting today. The TAC-65 performed extremely well. In fact, there was a lot more shooting going on today than what we filmed. Uh, whether we had it on the Ruger 1022 or the Walther P22, it performed extremely well on either and was very easy to switch back and forth. Now, one of the things I must talk about in regards to a 22 suppressor, we've all had rimfire cartridges and we know how dirty they can be. Now, all that dirt gets put in here. Now, what's really interesting about the 22 cartridge, the tips are actually made out of lead they're an unjacketed bullet so what happens is as that bullet travels down the barrel it will heat up and the outside edges will become molten at the muzzle that molten lead will spray out into the suppressor now this also happens when the suppressor is not on but you don't ever notice it it's just a little dirt debris around the end of the muzzle that gets cleaned off when you clean your, your weapon system well that actually gets trapped inside here and then it hits the sides and dries hard. So it can eventually build up and cause you problems in your suppressor. So you wanna get that tool, you wanna to absolutely get that tool and clean this. I clean mine every use and it's not very hard. You just screw that off, take out the pieces, take a wire brush, which will very easily clean off that excess lead and be good to go. As always, if you'd like to check out a little bit more of what Dire Times has to offer, you can check out right here, which is the tensile tree tent. It was a really good time. Pretty much three hammocks all together in a big tent up in the trees. Hanging out is exactly as cool as it sounds. Or you can check out right here, which is the Mora Light My Fire Knife. It's pretty much a Mora companion with a fire starter in the back of it. Really neat. Amanda Litton actually helps us out with that. She's also a blogger. Uh, she's got a blog, Huntress and Hills, and you can check that out in the links below. And lastly, if you enjoyed what you saw here and want to see a little more firearm action with Dire Times, you can check out the Browning 1919, where we take a civilian legal belt fed machine gun, for lack of a better term. Uh, we do have a crank. Awesome times. But anyhow, I am your host, David Dyer, and I encourage you to check out our Facebook. We also have a podcast that goes live on the second and fourth Fridays of the month uh, with host Ty Ward. Awesome guy. Um, so definitely check out all that, and those links will all be below. So thanks again, and I'll catch you next time. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.